In this video, I am going to cover up my melasma using these products by e.l.f. Cosmetics, all for $28, and that includes this makeup brush. Please keep watching. When looking at the costs of managing melasma, including sunscreens, treatments, skincare products, dermatology consults, and makeup, being able to find ways to keep it budget friendly when possible is helpful and I welcome it. If you are new to my channel, hi, my name is Amy. I have melasma. I am a registered nurse and I post videos dedicated to topics related to melasma and ways I manage it. If this type of content interests you, please subscribe. Now, if you are not familiar with e.l.f. Cosmetics, the name ELF is an acronym for eyes, lips, face. And I really like this line. It offers high quality makeup, makeup tools, and skincare at such a great value. And it's readily available at places like your local drugstore, Target, Walmart, Ulta, and online through the brand website and Amazon to name a few. Now I have been using and liking many of their makeup items and I have been wanting to try this uh, CC cream and concealer. And today is the day. To start, I have on my face this untinted mineral sunscreen called Ampure Perfect Sika by Suntique. And I'll put the link below for my video where I talk more about this sunscreen if you are interested. Now, here is a clip to better show my melasma before I apply the sunscreen. And as you can see, I have melasma patches on the sides of my face and the area above the upper lip. Here's another quick tip. If you are going to apply makeup over your base layer of sunscreen and you have the time, I recommend waiting a few minutes before applying makeup to let the sunscreen settle to help minimize any movement of the sunscreen that may occur during makeup application. Okay, so let's get into this. I have the Camo CC Cream, this was $14. This is their 16 hour camo concealer. This was $6 and the makeup brush was $8. Now I want to take a look at this packaging. This is the CC cream. This reads color correcting, full coverage, natural finish, skin loving ingredients, collagen, peptides, niacinamide. Now niacinamide is a great ingredient to have in your skincare routine for many benefits, including benefits for your melasma. And I will link my recent skincare videos where I talk more about niacinamide. Um, this says that it provides broad spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen and the active ingredients listed in the back are the uh, sunscreen ingredients. This is obviously a combination sunscreen with octanoxate 7.5%, titanium dioxide 4.45%, and zinc oxide 13.72%. Now another quick tip I want to give. I consider SPF and makeup to be a bonus, not a substitute for daily sunscreen, just because of the amount of makeup that would be needed to be applied to achieve that stated SPF. So don't rely on that. Um, this is shade 2 light 240W. And e.l.f. Cosmetics just recently added 10 more shades to, um, that are available for this CC cream. So that makes it a total of 30 shades that are available. So a really nice wide range. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, concealer. This is the, this is the 16 hour camel concealer uh, to conceal, contour, and highlight. Uh, concealing is really what I'm looking at. Uh, full coverage matte, I like the full coverage part. We'll see if we like the matte. And um, this shade is medium peach. The concealer comes in 28 different shades. And then of course, here is the makeup brush, pretty straightforward with its uh, complexion dual. So this means uh, foundation for this side and concealer for that side. And let's give it a go. Okay, well, let's break into this. Got the CC cream here and the concealer here. And then of course the brush. Okay, so this packaging is very reminiscent of my favorite IT Cosmetics CC cream. It has the pump. And what I like to do when I start is to just put a small amount on the back of my hand maybe like about that much, um, just so it's easier for me just to take it in, onto the brush. And then it also helps me to know how much I am putting onto my, my face. So I'll go ahead and 
dab a little bit of that and I'm just going to start on this side of my face and what I think I'm going to do is just apply it to half of my face so you can see we can both see uh, the type of coverage that it provides. I'll just get started here and right away I can tell that it is a really good match to my uh, skin tone. That was the, where is it here? The 240, the light 240W. So I'm just gonna take it up here and yeah, already I really like it. I use a kind of a tapping motion um, when I apply it on. Get that stubborn upper lip area. Yeah, I really like this. Now I don't have too much hyperpigmentation on my forehead area. My melasma is primarily, like I mentioned, on the sides of my face and that dreaded upper lip area. <laughs> For all of you who have a melasma, uh, you know, mustache, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So far, so good. I like the coverage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up this side. The camera. It's picking up how well this is covering, but I am very pleased. So when I am testing makeup to conceal my melasma, the two main things I am looking for are one, obviously, how well it is covering up my dark patches, and two, making sure it does not create a cakey layered look, because I think that draws more attention to my melasma, and dry cakey is not a good look for my mature skin. So it's a balance for me. Now this product can definitely be layered for more coverage, but more is not always better. Plus I have this concealer to hit any of those stubborn areas. So let's see how um, this looks. I'm gonna go ahead and just dab a little bit more of the CC cream and then let's give this uh, concealer a try. Um, this has a nice applicator that on the box, where's this box? It described it as an oversized doe foot. But what I'm going to do is just pick up the um, concealer on the other side of this brush. And what I like to do, and I've mentioned this before in some of my other videos where I put on makeup and I'm not all that comfortable applying makeup on video because I am not a makeup artist, but I like to share what I do to help uh, conceal my melasma. But what I do is I tend to hit the outer areas of my melasma patches to help kind of um, minimize that contrast between the dark melasma patch and the unaffected area of my skin. So. This CC cream actually really good coverage, but I can still see a little bit of my um, melasma patch. So I'm just gonna hit a little bit of the concealer, not too much. Again, wanna avoid that kind of cakey look. And then I'm gonna, I think I'll use the foundation side of it to kind of blend that in. Uh, so maybe put a little bit more on. And then blend it all in and do the same thing on this way, on this side, not this way. <laughs> and then for the stubborn mustache area, I'm gonna get a little bit more on this applicator. For the upper lip area, I like to hit the top side of it. And then 
bring it down. And I think this too kind of minimizes that contrast between where the patch starts and where it ends. And then of course the corners of the nose and then I'm gonna use the larger foundation side of the brush and just kind of buff it all in there. And I do also like to hit this area here and then let's see how this works on my dark under eye area. And again, I use the bigger brush to blot it all out. And I really like overall how this looks. I have to say I am very pleased with how well this has covered my melasma. My skin still looks like skin, uh, not cakey at all. And my face is looking pretty good, but now it does need a bit of makeup on my eyes, lips, and face to complete the look. So I'm gonna use a few e.l.f. makeup products and I will link everything below. Overall, I give these products high marks and I recommend them. They pass the test for how well they cover up my melasma and minimize the look of my melasma. Uh, for the ease of application, this brush works really well. I love the finish. And you know they already pass the budget-friendly test. And another common way uh, to decide if a foundation or concealer is good is by how well it wears throughout the day. Now, I have seen people talk about how uh, makeup looks at the end of a 10 or even 12 hour day before they give it the official nod. But I'm usually not too concerned about my makeup holding up for the entire day simply because during the day I am reapplying sunscreen every few hours. And I have had people ask me about makeup while wearing a mask. So sunscreen is a given whether I'm wearing a mask or not. And if I know that I'm gonna be taking a mask on and off throughout the day, I tend to pass on applying makeup on the mask area of my face or keep it to a minimum and touch up when the mask comes off. And I say this because if I'm touching up my makeup, it usually has nothing to do with the quality of that makeup. Now, if this is evening time, especially when it gets dark around 5 p.m. this time of the year, then sunscreen reapplication is obviously not a factor. Uh, then I am looking for good coverage to last for that evening, but obviously that's still less than a full day. But regardless, a common area that requires touch-ups for me is that area above the upper lip. And for $6, I will pick up an extra one of these to have handy in my bag for touch-ups. Well, I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may benefit. I will put links for all the e.l.f. cosmetics products that I used in this video in the description box below. Thank you to my current subscribers and wishing everyone good health and thank you for taking the time to invest in your face. Bye.